An Ethernet switch is a centralized networking device. It works in the middle of the network. It connects end devices to the network. End devices use frames to communicate. A frame is a small piece of the data stream that two end devices exchange. Due to network bandwidth and many other factors, a device cannot send the entire data stream at once. It has to break the data stream into many small pieces. The process of breaking a data stream into smaller pieces is called segmentation. After segmentation, the device attaches the necessary information to each data piece. This information includes the source address, destination address, and other protocol-specific information. The destination device uses this information to know about the source device and regenerates the original data stream by assembling all frames. The intermediate devices use this information to make forwarding decisions. A switch is an intermediate device. It uses this information to make a forwarding decision. A switch has many ports. It forwards an incoming frame only from the port connected to the destination device of the frame. We can divide this process into three phases, learning, decision-making, and forwarding. Let us understand these phases in detail. In the learning phase, a switch learns the addresses of all connected devices and saves them into a table known as the CAM table. It uses incoming frames to learn the addresses. Let us understand this process through an example. When a PC wants to send a data stream, it breaks the data stream into small pieces, known as segments. There are two types of addresses, software addresses, and hardware addresses. The device needs to attach both types of addresses to each segment. It first adds software addresses. Software addresses are also known as IP addresses. A segment with IP addresses is known as a packet. After adding the software addresses, the device attaches the hardware addresses. Hardware addresses are also known as MAC addresses. A packet with MAC addresses is known as a frame. A switch understands and uses only hardware addresses to process frames. When it receives a frame, it reads the source MAC address and destination MAC address of the frame. It uses the source address to learn about the connected device. It uses the destination address to make forwarding decision. It saves source addresses in a table known as the CAM table. The CAM table has three fields, MAC address, port, and aging. In the MAC address field, it saves the MAC address the frame has in the source field. In the port field, it saves the port's information on which the switch received the frame. In the aging field, it saves a timer. It assigns a separate timer to each entry of the CAM table. This timer is used to age out old entries from the CAM table, allowing room to store new entries. This feature is known as the aging. Once the CAM table is full, the switch has no place to store any new addresses. Aging resolves this issue by automatically removing the old entries from the CAM table. It keeps the MAC addresses of only those devices that are constantly sending the frames. If any device is not sending the frames, once the timer is expired, it removes the MAC address of that device from the CAM table. In this way, only the devices that are constantly sending frames remain in the CAM table and the devices that are not sending any frames will eventually be removed from the table. When a switch receives a frame, it finds the frame's source address in the CAM table. If it finds an entry for the source address, it resets the timer stored in the aging field. If it does not find an entry, it adds a new entry for the source address. There is one more possible situation. If the switch finds an entry for the source MAC address with the different port information, it assumes that the device has been relocated. Let's understand this process through this example. PC1 sends a frame to PC4. The switch receives it on port 1. Since the table has no entry for PC's MAC address, the switch adds a new entry for it. Now suppose you move PC1 from port 1 to port 6. PC1 sends a frame. The frame reaches the switch on port 6. The switch finds the PC1's MAC address in the table. The table has an entry for PC1's MAC address but with different port number. In this situation, the switch updates the port information along with the timer. If we move PC1 back to port 1, the switch updates the associated port in the CAM table again. This feature makes the relocation of devices completely hassle-free. A switch uses a relatively simple concept to forward a frame. It finds the destination MAC address of the incoming frame in the CAM table. If the CAM table has an entry for the destination MAC address, it forwards the frame from the port mentioned in the entry. If the CAM table does not have an entry for the destination MAC address, it forward the frame from all ports except the port on which it arrived. The process of forwarding a frame from all ports except the port on which it arrived is called frame flooding. 
a switch floods a frame if it has an unknown unicast, multicast, or broadcast address in the destination address field. An unknown unicast address is an address that is not available in the CAM table. A multicast address belongs to a group of devices. A broadcast address belongs to all devices on the local network. Multicast and broadcast are destination-only addresses. These addresses are never used in the source address field of a frame. Since these addresses are never used in the source address field of a frame and a switch uses the frame source field to learn addresses, a switch never learns about these addresses. These addresses always remain unknown to the switch. And as we know, a switch always floods a frame having an unknown address in the destination address field. Because of this, a frame having an unknown unicast, multicast, or broadcast address in the destination address is always flooded by the switch. Let's understand this process through this example. PC1 sends a unicast frame to PC3. The frame reaches the switch on port 1. The switch reads the destination address field of the frame to make a forwarding decision. A switch reads the frame's destination address field before the source address field. It first makes a forwarding decision based on the destination address and then updates the CAM table based on the source address. This frame has PC3's MAC address in the destination address field. Since PC3's MAC address is not available in the CAM table, the switch decides to flood the frame. The frame reaches PC3. PC3 replies with its frame. The frame reaches S1 on port 3. The switch reads the frame's destination address and finds it in the CAM table to make a forwarding decision. The frame has PC1's MAC address in the destination address field. This address is available in the CAM table. The switch decides to forward the frame from port 1. After making the forwarding decision, the switch reads the source address field to update the CAM table. The source address field contains PC3's MAC address. This address is not available in the CAM table. The switch adds a new entry for it in the table. The switch forwards the frame from port 1. The frame reaches PC1. A switching method explains how a switch starts the forwarding phase. There are three switching methods, the store and forward method, the fragment free method, and the cut through method. In the store and forward method, the switch waits till all fields of the frame are received. After receiving all fields of the frame, the switch verifies whether the received frame is error free. If the received frame is error free, the switch forwards the frame from the selected port or ports. If the received frame contains errors, the switch discards the frame. To know the condition of a frame, the switch uses the FCS field of the frame. The FCS field contains a value known as the CRC value. The CRC value allows a receiving device to know whether the frame is exactly in the same state as the source packed it or has been damaged or tempered in the middle. After creating a frame, the sender or the source device runs the cyclic redundancy check algorithm on it. The value produced by this algorithm is known as the CRC value. The CRC value is stored in the FCS field of the frame. After storing the CRC value, the sender device loads the frame on the media. Upon receiving the frame, the receiver or destination device runs the CRC algorithm on the frame and compares the result with the CRC value stored in the FCS field of the frame. If the result and the CRC value are the same, the frame is considered error-free. If they are not the same, the frame is considered as the damaged frame. In the store and forward switching method, a switch forwards only error-free frames. To know the state of a frame, it pulls the complete frame, runs the CRC algorithm, and compares the result with the result stored in the FCS field. It forwards the frame only if both results match. This method provides the highest level of accuracy but at the cost of speed. If we compare all three methods of switching, this method respectively stands at the first and the last positions in terms of accuracy and speed. In the cut-through method, the switch starts forwarding as soon as the forwarding port is determined. An Ethernet frame stores the destination MAC address in the first field. To forward a frame, a switch only needs the destination address of the frame. Since the destination address occurs very early in the Ethernet frame, a switch can start forwarding the received bits of the frame before receiving all bits of the frame. In this method, the switch does not check the condition of the frame before forwarding it. This reduces the latency, but it also propagates errors. Of all three switching methods, this is the fastest method of switching. But it provides speed at the cost of having forwarded some frames that contain errors. In the fragment-free method, after determining the forward port, the switch waits till the first 64 bytes of the frame are received. The 64 bytes is the minimum legal size of an Ethernet frame. An Ethernet frame that is smaller than 64 bytes is known as the runt frame. 
a runt frame is a corrupt frame. This method is the modified version of the cut-through switching method. This method reduces the number of runt frames that are being switched. If we compare it with the remaining two methods, it provides moderate speed and accuracy. Packet Tracer is network simulator software. Cisco developed it mainly for its certification program. It simulates essential Cisco devices. We can use it to learn this concept in more detail. Add a switch to the workspace. You can pick any switch for this practice. Add four PCs to the workspace. Now, connect these PCs to the switch. We use a copper straight cable to connect a PC to the switch. Connect PCs to switch ports in a sequence. Connect the first PC to the first port. Connect the second PC to the second port. Connect PC3 and PC4 to the third and fourth ports. We do not need to configure anything on PCs and the switch for this exercise. The switch automatically learns the MAC addresses of the connected devices from the incoming frames. To view the CAM table, we use the show MAC address table command in the privileged exec mode. As we can see here, this table has no entry right now. This is because the switch hasn't received any frame. It learns MAC addresses from the incoming frames. Let's send a broadcast frame from PC1. There are two ways to assign an IP configuration to a device, static and DHCP. In the static method, we manually assign an IP configuration to the device. In the DHCP method, the device automatically gets an IP configuration from the DHCP server. DHCP uses broadcast messages to provide IP configurations. To receive an IP configuration from the DHCP server, a device sends a broadcast message to the local network. It uses its MAC address in the source address field. From the source address field, the switch learns the PC's MAC address. To verify it, we can view the CAM table again. This is the MAC address of the PC1. To confirm it, we can check the MAC address on the PC. As we can see here, the PC's MAC address and the MAC address learned by the switch are the same. It verifies the switch learned the MAC address from the incoming message. The switch forwards the broadcast message from all ports. Since we did not configure any DHCP server in this network, the PC does not get a reply. Now, let us assign a manual IP configuration on this PC and PC3. Two PCs can communicate only when they have both the IP addresses and the MAC addresses. Assign an IP configuration to PC3 from the same IP subnet. We can use the ping command to test connectivity between two devices. It sends ICMP echo messages to the destination device. If the destination device is up, it replies with its own ICMP echo messages. The switch learns PC3's MAC address from the incoming frames. To verify it, we can check the CAM table entries again. We can also check the PC3's MAC address. As we can see here, both the PC3's MAC address and the MAC address added by the switch are the same. It verifies the switch learned the MAC address from PC3's incoming frames. Now, let us assign IP configurations to the remaining PCs. Assign an IP configuration from the same subnet. Since these PCs didn't send any frame, the switch does not know the MAC addresses of these PCs. The switch will learn the MAC addresses of these PCs only when it receives incoming frames from these PCs. Send the ping requests from PC4 to PC2. The switch will learn the MAC addresses of both PCs when they exchange the ICMP echo messages. To verify it, let us check the CAM table entries again. As we can see here, the switch has updated the CAM table. It verifies the switch learns the MAC addresses from the incoming frames. That's all for this video. If you have any comments, suggestions, or feedback about this video, please share them in the comment section given below.